our paper towel holder in the in the kitchen got knocked over and got kind of woogity, and I thought, well, what a great project. I'll make one. I, I was inspired by a project by Bob Roseanne in the December uh, 2017 issue of American Woodturner. Uh, this is a great project for beginners because it's basically simple spindle work, only uses a couple of uh, uh, tools. Uh, it doesn't require a chuck. You could, uh, I use a chuck in this project, but you could do it all between centers or with a, with a faceplate and, and a glue block. Hi, y'all. Mike Peace, Mike Peace Wood Turning. I'm passionate about wood turning, and I, uh, I'm here to inspire you and, and give you tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a better wood turner. If it's something you're interested in, click on the subscribe button and, and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any future videos. Okay, here's the material we're going to be using today. We've got a waste block on a face plate. Uh, we've got about a 3 inch by 2 inch scrap uh, waste block. We've got, uh, this is a little thicker than 3 quarters, but 3 quarters is thick enough. It's what I had. This is a 3 quarter inch, this is 3 quarter inch, and this is about uh, 2 inches by 12. This is 3 quarter by 3 quarter by 10. This is about 3 quarter by 3 inches. This is uh, uh, eight inch diameter cut out on a cut that out on a bandsaw both these pieces make it a little faster and easier to turn this one was a scrap uh, glued up piece of maple I had that I went ahead and uh, it was a ba ballast uh, handrail so I went ahead and turned it around for a future project and I thought well this will work out fine it's just about right the right dimension I don't even have to bother to rough it out but you'll be starting with square when you do you probably want something about two to two and a half inches square and you're going to turn it down to uh, uh, an inch and a half. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mount this uh, eight inch square of three quarter. This is probably closer to an inch. I'm going. You can do it several different ways. You can use hot melt glue. Heck, you could turn a tenon on it and like a, a platter and do it. But I'm going to use uh, some wood turner's double stick tape, which works real well in these circumstances and. This is going to hold up just fine. So, you know, looks like looks like this. You can get it at various where uh, wood turning items are sold. So I'm going to bring up the tail stock. And need to get a knife to, well, I guess I can probably use scissors. Uh, you just kind of cut the corner a little bit, scratch it to get that, uh, that stuff off. Now, the longer, uh, like a lot of glues, the longer this sets up, the better it is. I've already centered a hole here. Um, I've already uh, put a hole in it to center it. So all I've got to do is bring this up. So the longer it stays in contact, you want a clean surface on the wood. I've already wiped it down. And we're just going to let it uh, sit there for just a, just a couple of minutes to, to make sure it bonds, and then we'll come back. All right, so we're going to turn it around. We've cut the uh, got the tail rest up where we're going to be cutting on center. We're going to use a small uh, bowl gouge. Uh, the one thing I want to point out, you don't ever use on cross grain, that is bowl orientation or perpendicular grain, is don't ever use a spindle roughing gouge. It's called a roughing gouge, but we're trying to call it a spindle roughing gouge. It's got a very weak tang, just can't handle those stresses. It's got corners to get you in a... Uh, get you in trouble and won't get you out of so don't use this on on bowls or any face grain work so we're just going to use a small in this case a 3 8 inch uh, bowl gouge we're going to stand aside as we turn it up it'll stand out of the way that's the most dangerous time is when you first turn it on in case it was set at too high speed we're going to ramp up the speed just a little bit and then we're just going to take this uh bowl gouge, put it on our hip, and we're just going to just kind of get it round. I think maybe I'm a little bit low. Raise it just a little bit. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, lift the handle till it cuts. And then just like doing a spindle, you can see how how round it is by listening to the vibration. Okay, 
come in from this side here. I'm going to switch to a little uh, bowl gouge, a little steeper, a little easier, shorter hand, a little easier for me to get in there. Anchor the tool, lift the handle, ride the bevel, swing it around. Okay. That looks good. All I got to do is maybe sand that up just a little bit. We'll take a... I'll sand off the camera. You don't need to watch me doing any sanding. Okay, now we're going to remove the live center and replace it with a Jacobs chuck and a uh, Forstner uh, drill bit. Uh, I'm going to use three quarter inch because I think it gives me a little more glue surface. And we're going to drill about a half an inch and see if we can kind of gauge what that is based on the the depth of this. So this is about 3 8 inch deep. We're going to go a little bit more than 3 8 inch, which actually might be to this mark right here. Let me, yeah, that's going to, almost to that mark would be pretty close to a half inch. We're going to slow the drill bit, uh, slow the lathe down, no more than about 500. Lock the tail stock and ease it in. And we're done. Now we can take this uh, uh, sand just a little bit here in the middle. Uh, okay, I thought it'd be interesting to, to demonstrate how uh, how strong this Turner's tape is. Let me get this drill bit out of the way so I don't pull myself into it. And we're just going to take it and give it a pull. See, i got to spread my feet and brace it. <laughs> I'm pressing pretty <laughs> pretty hard for it to come off so that shows you how strong it is okay now we're going to turn the center column between the centers first thing i'm going to do is clean out my morse taper put in our step drive i've already marked the centers i'm going to use a spring punch or you could use an awl to, to actually have a place for the tip to register and we're going to put that in there Bring up, bring up the tail stock. Now, ordinarily, you'd be using square stock, and you'd have to bring it to round. But I've already, already done that on these because I pulled this out of my scrap pile. These have been laminated, and they're maple, same as matching the other one. So, first thing I want to do is I'm going to measure a half inch on each side for the, for the tenon. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take this down to uh, three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and now change this to, I say three quarters. We're going to take it down to, yeah, we're going to do three quarters of an inch for the tenon. So let me, so I'm going to use my uh, beating and parting tool because that's the easiest way to make a tenon. You could use a smaller parting tool, but a wider parting tool makes it a little bit easier. And we're going to get the speed up a little bit. This is between centers. This is the safest way to turn. We can take peeling cut here. Just a little bit. To show you, I've got this uh, revolving ring here, and I believe that's close to three quarters. It's a little bit larger than three quarters of an inch. So once I get down to this size right here, I can go ahead and start start being a little more careful. But it gives a, a quick ready reference. Actually, these are, I think, five-eighths of an inch. So somewhere between here and here. So let's get going. Now... Another thing I want to show you, you see how these edges flare up, and that's because I took a peeling cut. When you initially go in with a parting tool, uh, for some woods, you need to go square in until you slice the fibers. Then you can drop the handle. Now we can start being a little more careful. Oh, i got a good almost quarter of an inch to go. Get it a little small. Uh, no, I think those glue, glue fibers will, will handle that just fine. Okay, now, I like to do all my turning on this end, so I'm just going to turn this around. This will be just fine. So again, we go straight in. So we pierce the fibers. Then we can drop the handle and take that peeling cut. You can see these nice 
Nice peeling shavings. Just like fitting a box. Sometimes you just got to be careful and do it a little bit at a time. Get it right. This is almost there. Uh, it'd be tough with glue. Let's do it one more time. Take off just a little more dust. Not much. Okay. Now, you can shape these any way you want. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit, two coves, a cove here and a cove here, uh, just for appearance. And I think I'm just going to measure... And on this side, we'll get it round and start to cold down. When we get to the bottom of the hill, we got to come in from the other direction so we don't cut into end grain. Okay, now let's go ahead and sand it. Uh, we'll do that off the lathe, then we'll come back and do some embellishing. Then we're going to add some embellishing to that center center post. Uh, it's certainly overkill; it's not necessary. It's going to be covered up by paper most of the time. But if the paper's off, you're changing it. It'll look it'll look nice. So we're going to I'm going to put some burn rings. I think I'm going to put uh, get the speed up a little bit. Probably put two here. Okay, we're going to turn the speed of this up. Up to a couple thousand, lean over. Dropping that wrist in the back is what gives it the friction. And there we go. I think that adds a nice little touch. Okay, so uh, it fits nice. I grabbed a roll of uh, paper towels. They're a little... Uh, some's been used, so it doesn't measure the base, but it shows we've got a little bit of gap here. Now we're going to turn the, the removable cap that goes on 35 this. millimeter uh, jaws to hold this little scrap that I pulled out of my tenon bin that already had a tenon on it. All I had to do was uh, face off the front. All right. So now we're going to put this little scrap in here in a chuck. We're reusing the tape we had before. I'm just putting it on there, those two pieces, and just uh, trimming off the excess just so it won't get in the way. Now we're going to get that little little scrap. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. I think it might be cherry, but it might be mahogany. I don't know. But I've got a center mark on it, so we're going to put that center uh, here. We're going to uh, eventually uh, drill this so we don't have to worry too much about any damage. Okay. We're ready to turn this round. Uh, you, can use a, you can use a small bowl gouge or you could use a uh, spindle gouge if you like. Uh, we're just going to quickly get this round. Good. Okay, now we're going to round it over on both sides, but we're going to, we're going to turn it over to the, do the other side. So let's come in here like this. I'm going to change to a uh, half inch spindle gouge. And we're just going to round over the corner. You can almost think of this as a small bowl where this is the bottom. And, uh, and because this is the way we, the direction we'd be cutting. Okay. Now we're going to go and drill that uh, three quarters of an inch hole. We're going to swap this out, and we're just going to ease that in about a half inch. Again, we're using the reference mark on the drill bit to know when to stop. Now we're going to use the same scrap, but what we're going to do, and again, to show you how strong it is, we're going to pull, and that's on end grain, side grain here, uh, and, it, and it did just held it very strongly. Now, I should have gone ahead and sanded that, uh, but I can hand sand it. It's got pretty smooth cuts and that's going to be on the bottom of it. You don't have to sand much past, you know, 320 is plenty. This is almost like a f piece of furniture, not fine art, and it's going to get a lot of rough use. So what I want to do is mark the half inch tenon on here, half inch deep, three quarter inch tenon. Again, using that 
eight millimeter beading and parting tool. I'm just gonna put a little tenon on here. Okay, there's an old saying, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, I tell you, I love texturing, so I look for every opportunity to, to texture. So I'm going to bring out one of my hammers here. Uh, I've drawn a small circle in the middle we're going to stay away from. And I'm, the, we're just going to push this in hard and let it embellish. We're going to keep the speed down so it doesn't kick off. And we're just going to ease it in on one side and then bring it around. And then lift up and press. And the people that have a hard time with this particular texturing tool, it's because they're impatient. They don't let it do its work. It's not cutting, it's embossing. And if the harder the wood, the more patience you need. Now, like all texturing, we're going to take a uh, point tool and we're just going to uh, make it pop a little bit by framing it. I'm just going to put a little bit there, maybe a bead or two on the outside. Get the speed up a little bit. And it needs something else. It needs a little more on the outside, so I think I'm going to use a spiraling and texturing tool. Alright, this one's overkill, but I've got it handy. The other one needs... Uh, needs a wheel change so I'm just gonna go ahead and and use this and just put a little corner into it right right there we want to keep this down to no more than about 700 and almost all this is supported by that waste block too fast too fast slow it down for this big one you wanted somewhere less than seven seven hundred And that gives me some nice, uh, nice additional spiral markings, which, and I think that'll that will handle it. And then when we when we texture, want to use an abrasive, non-woven abrasive pad to kind of clean up any any frizzies. Don't want to use sandpaper. And wow, we're gonna have to knock on this one a little bit. No problem. It's not like we've got to worry about a box top breaking. This thing is very substantial. You know, there's a lot of different uh, uh, kitchen-related projects, and I've got links here at the bottom for a couple of them I've done on coffee, coffee scoops. So uh, check out that playlist and those projects and some of the others I've got. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.